The Las Vegas Raiders are deploying Devontae Adams like he's Randy Moss, and he's having arguably his most dominant season ever. When Josh McDaniels acquired him in the offseason, he decided to plug him into the 2007 Randy Moss role, you know, the 1,500-yard, 23-touchdown season where the Patriots almost went undefeated. It's kind of crazy to change what Devontae's always done. He's now become the first player ever with seven 100-yard games in three straight seasons. But after Green Bay used him more underneath, he's exploded in the deeper Moss role with the most targets of 20-plus yards and eight touchdowns of 20-plus as well. His average depth of target is the highest it's ever been, and the gamble to put him in this role has more than paid off. Today, we'll break it down into three different categories, first looking at how he was used in Green Bay, how he's destroying teams deep, and how he uses his release early to set up defenders to create space down the field. Back in Green Bay, their hands were forced to use him more underneath, knowing they didn't have the offensive line to hold up in protection long enough and didn't quite have the complement of weapons to spread teams out all over the field. Devontae was targeted on screens and RPOs a ton since the Packers opted for more of an efficient, paper-cut-them-to-death type of offense to mask the rest of their limitations. He still won on the perimeter with fades, of course, but he and Rodgers' game was mostly mind-melding on underneath stuff and trying to create yards after the catch on shorter throws. This obviously worked pretty damn well. Adams came to Vegas as one of the best receivers in the game, but I think as we move into Category 2, how he's bombing teams over the top, he's proving he can be definitively the best. Just like with Randy Moss, McDaniels designs plays specifically for him where they give him all the freedom in the world. His yards per reception is 15.2, almost two yards higher than any year he's ever had, and it's because of how the Raiders are using him. This is the get open Devontae or we take a 15-yard sack all or nothing play, where McDaniels is giving him the very freedom he gave Moss to get open. Here he has the option to either break left or right based on what the safety is doing. You can tell it's an option route based on Carr not throwing this the moment he breaks, but waiting till he's made his move. The Raiders use him to absolutely crush teams down the field on play action, where they can get him one-on-one -on, -one on isolated routes and haven't been afraid to take deep shots. Cars had his highest average depth of target ever at 8.8 .8, since he's willing to hold the ball late in the down and find Devontae deep. Cars needed to hold the ball longer this year to facilitate all of the deep dig routes over the middle, where Devontae is constantly free but naked wide open, and these digs have been one of the biggest parts of their offense since it sets up even bigger plays. The Raiders run him on deep 20-yard digs to get him in space against corners and to get him moving away from defenders to pick up Yak. After a while, defenses identify the Raiders' tendencies to try to get him on these deep overs, so they play inside leverage against him in order to take that away. The only way this route works for Devontae is if he beats the leverage of Asante Samuel Jr., which, to go through a defender's leverage, is one of the hardest things for a receiver to do. He stacks him off the line, which is crucial, then gives him a massive pressure step to sell him and breaks inside for the big catch. Look at the gravity he commands from the post-safety Derwin James. Instead of playing in the middle of the field, he pseudo-doubles Adams, so Samuel has him inside and underneath and James outside and deep, but he's making dudes straight up fall over. Then a few minutes later, now Samuel is playing way off, cause screw that, and so Dav hits him with the fake dig and he scores a touchdown. And against the Broncos, the Raiders love setting up the drive concept, which is just a shallow with a shorter Devontae dig behind it. And because he can either run away from defenders in man, or is a master at sitting down in the soft spots in zone, defenders get jumpy trying to cover it, and then he hits him with a double move, which walked off a Raiders win. Creating open space down the field is hard if you don't have a great release, which we all know he has. It's our third category. But before we dive deeper, I want to shout out this week's sponsor, SeatGeek. With football season heating up into the playoffs, SeatGeek is the best way to watch everything go down in real time, in real life. They make things super simple buying tickets, and it's by far the easiest ticketing app I've ever used. Football, concerts, basketball, festivals, and more, they are my favorite app because it's just click and go. I just used it to check out BCB Brock Purdy take down the greatest of all time in real life, watching him in person confirm that he is now the greatest 49ers quarterback to have ever lived, and right before the game, I just hopped on SeatGeek and got a couple dollars knocked off the price thanks to their deals. 
When the dot is green, that means you have a good deal, red is bad. So hop on now to find some greens, use my code Rollins for $20 off when you do. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code Rollins, and make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. So, getting back to Devontae, one of the staples of his game is his releases off the line, where he destroys cornerbacks every single time. I've done an episode on his signature hop release that I'll throw into the description box, but a quick overview is that he hops into the air when coaches literally tell you if you ever do that, you're getting benched. They know when you're in the air, if the corner jams you, you can't recover and your entire route is dead. But Devontae is so devastating when countering corners, he can totally get away with it. He uses chops, wipes, wherever the defender hits him, he's able to counter and defeat that arm and create even more separation. The reason his hop release is so good is because he has the extraordinary timing required to get his foot down before the corner gets his down. So despite his relatively slow 4 5 6 40 time, since he's always gaining a step on the corner because of his release, he always looks faster. What's cool about it is every release is customized to the corner, situation, and moment in the game, so each release is completely unique. Against Jalen Ramsey on Thursday Night Football, he sees him leveraged inside, which gives him tons of room up the sideline. His hop release squares Ramsey up and kind of freezes him, since he can't do anything when Devontae isn't doing anything. Then Dav gives him a single stick inside to force him that way, Single stick is just him putting this foot inside here, and Ramsey bites an extra half step that way so Devontae can flat out stack him and makes the catch. What you don't see on TV is the battle that happened before this play. Devontae set this whole thing up. He noticed Ramsey kept playing inside leverage, which is telling him he's going to be one on one since Ramsey had only played outside leverage if he had safety help to funnel him to. On a couple of running plays, instead of using the hop, he just jets up the field to show Ramsey he might just tear off the line immediately, then he starts showing him the hop release. He slow plays this one a bit, just to mix up the tempo, then a few plays later, this is right before the big catch, watch the move he gives him. He hops and waits to get that right foot in the ground just as Ramsey's left foot starts to go in the air. This gives Devontae the advantage in creating separation, since Ramsey's stuck in the mud at this moment, and still, this is just to set up the next play. This time, Devontae starts more up the field towards Ramsey, and now just like we just saw, gives him that hard inside single stick. Ramsey is so used to him going outside after the hop, he's sweating his ass off just waiting for the move back in, and so here, he's honestly just guessing. Going back to that previous play, watch the direction of how Devontae attacks him. If it was hours on a clock, this is like 10 or 11, which ends up making Ramsey think he's going inside next time. Then on the big play, it's 12 o'clock directly at him, momentum sliding inside, then he leaves Ramsey at the altar. Not only do corners have to worry about these deep fade routes, but they also have to fear his deadly back shoulder game. From week 11, Patrick Sertan, who, by the way, absolutely pops on film, had a pretty clear game plan to patiently wait for Devontae to make his move, bail way out to get over the top of the fade to practically force the back shoulder throw since he knows Carr is going to read his positioning over the top, so he'll try and throw underneath him, so he contacts him at the target point, but Carr and Devontae have that insane connection to where they just throw it over his head. This battle between the two will be must-see TV for the next few years, where Sertan is quickly becoming one of the best corners in the game, but Devontae is already at the top of his. In week four, he gives him this single stick inside after the hop release and destroys him on the back shoulder fade. Guys are always playing catch up against him, and then when Sertan is sitting on the hop release, that's when Devontae more so speed releases and once again burns him off the line. You can see why Sertan changes game plan later in the year, but it still didn't work. The Raiders have found their version of Randy Moss to plug into their offense, and while the overall team success has been… fleeting, Devontae Adams is having arguably his greatest season ever. He was amazing in Green Bay, but wasn't quite the downfield threat that the Raiders and McDaniels have turned him into. He's allowed Carr to become much more aggressive in ways that he hasn't been before, and despite his unique release package where coaches are worried he'll get smashed off the line, he has the second most yards for its press coverage since 2020. He leads the league in target percentage, the Raiders are feeding him, and even though he's not the fastest, strongest, he produces like crazy. Randy Moss's 2007 season has been the gold standard, where he dominated with 15.2 yards per reception. Well, this year, 
That's exactly what Devontae's at too. The Raiders have arguably the best receiver in the game, being used like one of the best receivers of all time. And by the end of the year, Devontae Adams' 2022 season will be historic. Yeah.